Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Yasir making another video. I'm sorry I've been gone for so long. Um, I'm going to be installing an additional NVMe SSD as well as a Seagate Fire CUDA 2.5 inch SSHD, uh, which I got both from Amazon uh, a couple, about a month and a half ago. And I've been using them and I really like them. This Sabrent uh, NF NVMe SSD drive is extremely fast. Uh, I'm getting read and write speeds of about 3.5 gigabytes per second, which is what they advertise. Um, just to give you perspective, um, this thing can move a 40 gigabyte file in about uh, 45 seconds, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, so if you have a 2019 uh, HP Omen 17 laptop. This video will help you out a lot. Um, my original drive that came in it from HP was just a single uh, 512 gigabyte Samsung NVMe SSD, which is great, but I just needed more space for a lot of the games that I wanted to put on there and, you know, my video files for, for gaming and screen recording and uh, the SSHD from Seagate is amazing and despite reports from people saying that you know it failed them as soon as they put it in I have had zero issues out of it um, it's basically you get a two terabyte hard drive so you get more space and it's got flash memory so it kind of learns and picks up on what files it needs to access the most and then it decrease it stores them in memory so that you have SSD like boot times um, this is a SATA drive, so it'll fit in your existing uh, 2.5 inch drive bay. So getting right into it, you'll just begin by removing the screws that are on the underside of the Omen laptop. Um, there's about 10 of them. And just a tip, you I would recommend using a screwdriver that has a magnetic tip on it um, because you really don't want to lose these screws. I laid a towel down because I knew that if any of these screws fell, they would fall onto the towel and not roll off of the table and fall on the floor because once they're lost, they're pretty tough to find. So um, I apologize for the dirty fans, um, but I, you know, it's been a while since I've kind of used canned air to clean those out. So if you're experiencing heat issues or you just don't seem to be getting effective cooling like you did ch turn your laptop over and check out those vents because they may be blocked with dust I'll take care of that after uh, after I finish this though and just make sure you don't miss any screws because if you do it's not going to come off I found it to be extremely easy to um, get these screws that I needed to remove out And as you can see, you got to also remember to get the screws near the top, which will be to the left and the right of the air vents. And if they seem to be a little hard to get out, just bear down just a little bit and it, you should start to find that they'll st they're going to start loosening up for you. And then once you have the base off, because I didn't do this in my review video, here's a look at the insides. Once you have the bottom base off, there's your battery, both exhaust fans, RAM, the NVMe SSD slots, the heat pipes, as well as the 2.5 inch hard drive that I installed that I had in another laptop. It was only 256 gigabytes. There is both dual channel. 16 gigabyte DDR4 uh, RAM sticks. I really, really like the way that the cooling system is arranged. Um, good job, HP. And so now moving on to the SSD, the NVMe. As you can see, I'm about to remove the screw for the uh, SSD cover super easy to get to all you have to do is just remove the screw that holds the plate down and you definitely want to put that screw nearby you're going to need it and then the plate just lifts up as you can see right here and there is your second 
NVMe SSD slot. That drive you may find Intel Optane drive in in there if you configured it that way via HP's website. Now I'm, I'm about to install the Sabrent NVMe SSD in the slot that you just saw that I pulled the plastic holder from. You have to make sure the orientation matches the slot configuration. It just pushes in very lightly. There's really not a lot of force needed to do this. And once that's in place, you push the plate back down and reinstall the screw. Here is where a magnetic head screwdriver would have really come in handy for me. Because in, as you'll see in just a minute, when you try to tighten it down, the screw has a tendency to kind of um, fall out of place because the threading is really not that long. And I apologize for the movement. Um, it's a little hard to do this one-handed. So again, I apologize. And you can also see the drive bay is empty and they have some heat and impact absorption pads there. Now that we have our 2.5 inch drive installed, all you have to do is take the, the SATA ribbon, which is pretty small, and just insert it into the slot. This one was a little hard to get in position because the previous SSD, um, the ribbon cable was a little bit longer and I, it didn't, it wasn't as stiff. This one is a little bit more resistant, so I had to really work it to get it into the uh, the cable, the cable holder. And you really want to make sure that it's in there snugly and doesn't come out because you would hate to have to go through all this and then reassemble the base just to find out that your ribbon cable is not inserted completely. So I always recommend double and triple checking this before you close everything back up. Now that that's in there, nice and secure, we're going to just give another look at the insides of the laptop. Again, very nice configuration. And um, now that we have everything in place, you just screw all of the screws that you took out to take the base off back in. And you don't have to over tighten these because if you strip the screws out, you know, you're going to have a hard time getting it back off if you want to do future upgrades like RAM or an additional, um, like a higher capacity SSD or something like that. And also, these are st stainless steel screws, and the threading on the heads of them, it doesn't take much to strip those out. So you really don't just want to tighten it just enough to where you're comfortable um, with how tight they are, and then stop. And again, I apologize for how rough the movement of the camera is. Um, until I get some better equipment, um, it's going to be a little bit tough to keep everything stable. And we're almost done. As you can see, I cleaned some of the dust off of the fans when I had the lid off. That was a prime opportunity to do that. Um, I just took a wet cloth and just went over the fan blades as well as um, cleaning out the holes in the, the, the base plate itself. And don't forget to put these screws in the front and um, you're all finished. So all of the screws are in, and now you have uh, a lot more storage than what you had when you came out of the box. Thank you. Like and subscribe if this helped.